The board established a new test in Browning Ferris that looks at whether a putative joint employer retains the right to directly or indirectly uh, determine or impact the material terms and conditions of employment of employees of another employer. Let's call them secondary employees. What the board used to look at was whether or not an employer in that circumstance exercised the rights, exercised that control. Now what the board has said very clearly is it doesn't matter whether or not you exercise it, it matters whether you retain that right and you have the ability to exercise it. The new standard is going to impact just about every employer in the United States. Uh, whether you are an employer um, who supplies personnel to other uh, employers, you're a temp agency, you're a staffing agency, you run the cafeteria at a bank or financial services firm, or whether you are the user of those services, you contract for someone to run a call center for you, to provide logistics and distribution for you, to staff um, an operation uh, to supplement your own employees, either working with them or without them, under Browning Ferris, the potential is there for that joint employer or that user uh, to be deemed to be an employee because of the fact that in, its con in your contract with the uh, supplier of that labor, you have the ability to directly or indirectly control who, uh, the terms and conditions. Think about how many contracts say I have the ability or the right under my agreement with a staffing agency to direct that they remove personnel from my facility or I have the ability to say the hours of the day that they need to be there, when they start, when they end, um, to set the production standards or the quality standards, and my personnel, my managers or supervisors may be um, exercising that, either directly or indirectly, by telling the temp agency, this is what I expect, this is what I need, or by interacting directly with those secondary employees, those leased personnel, um, and, and giving them direction. Um, in almost all of these in, in settings, you're going to be finding that Browning Ferris is relevant. The key takeaways are that if you have employees um, or personnel that are supplied by a, another agency or another entity, um, there's a much higher risk that you're going to be found to be a joint employer or a co-employer of those employees. Um, it's going to be relevant in terms of your ability to change contractors, your ability to change the work that the contractor's personnel do, um, the use of temps, the use of um, leased employees. These are all radically changed now where they're at risk um, for a number of reasons. One, the risk uh, that if the, those employees try to unionize or a union approaches them and tries to organize them, you as the user uh, the secondary employer are going to likely be named as a joint employer. Unions may claim that you are uh, together with the temp or leasing agency or contractor, that you form a common integrated enterprise. Um, they will look to have you at the bargaining table if they organize them. Uh, if you look at it in the context of um, a case called Miller and Anderson that the board is going to decide shortly, um, it's very likely that the NLRB is going to say that mixed units made up of primary employees and secondary employees can be represented together uh, for collective bargaining purposes. That's going to be a big change. Um, it, you need to look at all of your, uh, your agreements with your vendors, um, new ones, existing ones, and then not just the agreements, but how does the operation, how does the relationship work day to day? Uh, to see if there are areas where there is vulnerability that you can manage, that you can address risk, uh, but you're going to need to be vigilant and you're going to need to be almost in a constant uh, state of campaign. The board made it very clear when it decided Browning Ferris that the goal was to uh, change how it was applying the law uh, in light of what it sees as the new economy and the new nature of work. It's trying to make it easier for groups of employees to unionize, for unions to organize groups of employees, um, and not to allow the issue of who the employer is and how the relationship is structured to be a legal impediment to that. So, you know, take that with the board's new election rules, which are resulting in votes taking place in 23 to 25 days, the board's new rules in specialty health care for micro units, letting small groups of employees uh, be bargaining units um, that, that would not have been sustained years earlier. Um, together, you know, with Browning Ferris, it's a tremendous game changer.